What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Nubia Red Magic 3. This is an amazing little Android gaming smartphone. Whether you're going to be using this for native Android gaming or emulation, this is definitely one to think about. With 2019 flagship specs and under $500, this is a great little choice if you're not wanting to spend $1,000 on a Galaxy S10. Nubia offers three different variants of the Red Magic 3 as making this video. They have a red and a black version with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage, and that's going for $479. They also have their new camo version with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage, and that comes in at $599. Personally, I picked up one of the cheaper variants. This is the black version with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. Oh yeah, and by the way, it has RGB LEDs on the rear and a cooling fan built into this phone along with their liquid cooling system. And they even left us with a 3.5mm audio jack for our headphones. So in this video, I want to go over the specs of this phone, I want to run some benchmarks, test out some native Android gaming, and by the end, we'll get into some emulation. So like I mentioned, they did pack a cooling fan inside of this phone, and it actually helps out a lot. You can hear the fan kick on, it's not terribly annoying, you can definitely hear it if you put it up to your ear, and you can feel the hot air being blown out of the exhaust. And the fan can be disabled in the software if you don't want it running, but it does help out with extended gaming periods. So like I mentioned, for the price of this phone, this thing has some crazy specs. For the CPU, we have the Snapdragon 855. This is an octa-core CPU. One core is at 2.84 gigahertz. I guess they overclocked the single core. The other three big cores are at 2.44, and it has four smaller cores at 1.8 gigahertz. The GPU is an Arduino 640, and they keep this all cool with a physical fan built in, plus liquid cooling. You'll find three variants of this phone, one with 6GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. Next up, we have 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, that's the one I have. And then finally, their highest end, 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. Unfortunately, none of these variants support a micro SD card. The screen on this thing is absolutely beautiful. I actually suspected that it was a higher resolution than they have, but it's a 6.65 AMOLED display at 1080 by 2340. It's a wide screen stretched out display and it looks absolutely beautiful. It's also running at 90 Hertz instead of 60, so you get that super smooth gameplay as long as the game supports 90 FPS. And the phone is running Android 9.0. 5,000 milliamp hour battery with an 18 watt quick charger included in the box. We also have Wi-Fi 802.11 ABG and an AC dual band, Bluetooth 5.0, dual front stereo speakers, a 48 megapixel rear camera, and the pictures coming out of this thing look amazing. It'll also do video up to 8K 15 FPS, but this is kind of a gimmick right now. It's not great quality. It's pretty cool to see it on a phone, but I don't think the tech is here yet. But if you want to do 4K at 30 or 60 or 1080p at 30 or 60, it looks great. It also has a 16 megapixel front camera and that'll do 1080p, 30 or 60 video also. The phone is also touted to be able to do super slow-mo video, but unfortunately I cannot find the setting on my phone. I'm using the US ROM version, but on paper and in the specs, they say that this thing will do 1080p at 1920 FPS for the slow-mo setting. But like I said, I cannot find the setting on my phone, and I know this does support it because I have seen videos on YouTube, but they're kind of the Chinese or the Japanese ROM. Hopefully it's added to the US ROM version in the next update. So here's a look at the device. It's actually a pretty big phone, as you can imagine, with a 6.6 inch screen. On the back here, we have the little fingerprint reader. I personally don't use these much, but it should come in handy for some people. We also have the connections for their proprietary docking station. USB Type-C on the bottom, 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the top, and over here on the right hand side of the phone there are two little touch sensitive trigger buttons that they've added. You can set these up in your favorite FPS so you could use them as a fire or reload button. We also have the power button over here plus volume up and down. And on the left hand side of the device there's the gaming switch and this is going to bring us to the Nubia game launcher screen. This will also ramp up the internal fan, kill unnecessary background apps so we can free up a little more RAM, and enable the RGB strip on the rear. Now this can be enabled at all times if you want to, I just have it turned off in software. But overall, I personally like the game launcher that they've included with this, and this is pretty much the only bloat that they have on this version of Android 9.0. It's a pretty clean version. 
The first thing I like to do when I get a new Android device is run some benchmarks. Now I'm going to be taking the Red Magic 3 and putting it up against three gaming smartphones that are available as of making this video. The first benchmark is Geekbench 4. This is the single core score. At the very top we have the Red Magic 3 at 3480. Next on the list is the Asus ROG gaming phone. Now this is $800 right now on Amazon. It has the Snapdragon 845, which was last generation, and this came in at $2,536. Moving down a little bit to the Black Shark 2, this goes for around $600 to $700 online depending on where you buy it. This is also using the Snapdragon 855 just like the Red Magic 3, and they're coming in right on par with each other. Now, I wasn't able to get my hands on a Black Shark 2, so I pulled these from the Geekbench website, but I'm pretty sure if I was able to run it a few times, we could match the Red Magic 3's performance here in all of these benchmarks you're about to see. And finally, the Razer Phone 2. Again, this is the Snapdragon 845, last gen, and this is coming in at 2,409. Moving over to the multi-core score in Geekbench 4. Red Magic 3 came out on top, but like I said, if I got my hands on the Black Shark 2 and ran it a few times, we could get the same exact score. I did run a few more benchmarks, I'm just going to let them play out here. So like I mentioned, the Red Magic 3 packs a 48 megapixel rear camera with a Sony sensor. The pictures that come out of this thing are beautiful. And at 48 megapixels, even cropped at 400%, it still looks great. Even 4K video quality from this phone is phenomenal. This is 4K 60fps, but when we move up to that 8K 15, I really can't tell a difference between the quality, but the frame rate definitely suffers. So now it's time to get into some gaming, and I, I actually can't get over how beautiful this screen is. But first up, we're going to go with Asphalt 9. And of course you can connect Bluetooth controllers, and they'll work with any game as long as it supports a controller. Right here I'm just using the touch screen, and Asphalt 9 runs flawlessly. And I can already tell you right off the bat that this phone's going to play any native Android game, whether you get it from the Google Play Store or you download the APK. PUBG and Fortnite are supported. And without any hacks at all, it'll run PUBG at 60 FPS with the highest resolution setting. I'm actually so used to testing PUBG Mobile on lower end Android devices, I never thought it would run this well. This is amazing. Like I mentioned, Fortnite is supported on this phone, and I'm using a Bluetooth Xbox One S controller here. Works fine with Fortnite. I'm at 100% resolution scale, epic settings, but there's no option to go to 60 FPS, so we're going to be stuck at 30. I would have loved to run this at 60 FPS, and hopefully in the future they can patch this out, but even at 30 FPS, Fortnite runs really smooth on this phone. I also went through and did a quick test on Minecraft, San Andreas, Bully, and a few other games from the Google Play Store and they all run fine on this phone. With native Android gaming out of the way and working really well on the Red Magic 3, it's time to get into some emulation. I'm going to be testing a couple PSP games using PPSSPP 1.80. First up we have God of War Chains of Olympus and I'm upscaled to 4x resolution, no hacks on whatsoever. And yes, you can turn the on-screen controls off, I just kind of forgot to. I'm using an Xbox One S Bluetooth controller. There's two main games that I like to test with different devices using the PPSSPP emulator. One being God of War Chains of Olympus. It's really hard to run. As you can see, we're at 4x resolution, running at full speed. 60 FPS, and I don't have any hacks on, which is pretty amazing. An even harder game to run that a lot of people don't realize is Killzone Liberation. It puts a beating on all the Android devices that I've ever tested out, but on this one here, I can get full speed at 4x with no hacks.
Dreamcast emulation on this phone is going to be no issue at all, whether you're using the ReDream emulator or Raycast. I'm using ReDream here, and I'm actually upscaled to 1920 by 1440. It looks amazing and plays fine. We're at 60 FPS, and it just works great. I've tested several games here, and I haven't had any issues at all. And finally, for the emulation portion, at least for this video, I know a lot of you guys are going to want to see more emulation on this device, so I will have a dedicated video coming up very soon. But here, we have the Dolphin emulator running GameCube games at full speed. I'm actually using the OpenGL plugin instead of Vulkan, and performance is great. This is even better than the Nvidia Shield Android TV. This game ran natively on the original GameCube at 30, and we're at 30 FPS here on this phone. I also tested Melee and we're getting the same type of performance. This is the OpenGL backend, 60 FPS. So in the end, the Red Magic 3 is an awesome Android smartphone and it does really great at native Android gaming and emulation as you just saw. There is one thing, only one thing that I found out about this thing that I do not like. We do not have HDMI out through USB Type-C yet. There is rumor circulating that they are working on an update to get HDMI out through USB Type-C, but you got to take that kind of stuff with a grain of salt. It may never come to this phone. Hopefully it does, because personally, I would love to be able to plug this into a USB Type-C to HDMI converter and use it on my big screen TV. Even if it was running at 1080p, I'd be totally fine with it. This would be an awesome little gaming console then, but right now, we have no HDMI out through USB Type-C, and that's the biggest letdown. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave links to Nubia's website in the description. And like I mentioned, I will have a full emulation video coming up very soon. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Red Magic 3, just let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on this. If they add HDMI support, I will be making a video on that also. So keep an eye out, and like always, thanks for watching.